Right, so this um, project is called Creative Processes in Irish Traditional Music uh, at Bar Own Glen Perspective. Um, so I suppose I'm taking the Hall of Sullivan's take on creative process, that's kind of what I mean in, in that title there. Um, and it's very much centred on how you hold the Bar Own stick, so I'm kind of right into the minutiae of Bar Own playing. And so I came up in a um, it was an arts practice project I did in the second semester. I came up with this idea of grip postures just as a way of saying how you hold a stick. Um, and there's, I suppose, this whole project is based on a couple of observations. Um, one is that the vast majority of our own players, they all use this orthodox grip posture, which is, you know, how I would have learned as well. And I've started calling that the Mercier grip posture <coughs> just because. Uh, Pat Mercy would be kind of a well-known exponent of that posture. So I'll just have a little video of him here just to show you what I mean in the flesh. <laughs> Very much just you kind of one active end of the stick that does most of the work, like that. He plays with kind of a broken wrist, so it very much facilitates doing rolls on the downbeat like that. And then I kind of be calling what everybody you care to mention, apart from Tommy Hayes, plays with this Mercer grip posture. So I'd say so. Somebody like Colin Murphy has a variation on it where his wrist is straighter and he kind of tucks his fingers under the stick, so that gives it a slightly different action. And then a lot of players actually will have um, all the fingers under the stick like that. So a lot of the top end players seem to play like that. So that's what I call Mercer grip posture. Um, so when I start, I kind of always just puzzled me like, is, why are we all just playing kind of the same way? And then when you start looking into these things, you find out that just this video just to see somebody doing something so different so instead of what I'm calling Mercer where you're using this sort of action Seamus Dunhu is coming at it from the other side so he's kind of using a similar rotation of the wrist but he's kind of playing with the other end of the stick like that so I was very impressed with that I was like okay somebody else doing something funny that's great and then it kind of struck me that I, I'd seen these pictures of uh, Sean Arita, and it's like, okay, he's doing something funny. And looking into this, other people have noticed it as well, and Tommy Hayes calls this tambour technique, where you're doing this sort of action. So that's another strange motion of the stick again. Um, now there's no video footage of Sean Arita doing that, but Amy the Butler, who uh, was a musical collaborator, um, he uses that tempo technique as well, so I'll just give you a blast for that. He's a virtuoso, but he's playing different to everybody else, so you have him here in his own words explaining okay. the posture. My style is the stick flicks backwards and forwards around my first finger, using my thumb and my third finger to um, connect with it. So when I flick it with the third finger, the thumb and the first finger open up. And then to get my down struck, I close come close back in. So
radically different to all the others. It's very much a finger technique, so whereas um, Mercier, all in the wrist, Don is pretty much all in the wrist as well. Tamper technique, all in the wrist, but uh, Connie's thing, it's all in the fingers. Um, now, all of these sound different to me, you know, kind of every different way of holding the stick gives it a different attack and what I find interesting is say the Mercier one your basic motor rhythm for quavers it's all happening in the same spot on the skin whereas with say Tommy's one he's kind of making this triangle so that kind of has a pretty profound uh, effect on his uh, on, on his sound um, then you've also got John Joe Kelly he's just got this particular technique uses and um, Eric Cunningham calls this the match grip fill so this would be like match grip on the drums John Joe Kelly uses it in that way kind of just like a special effect he doesn't put the whole tune in it Yet another strange technique. Um, I've just two more to go here now. Um, this one is Stevie McNamara from Player. <laughs> So you could uh, combine these different grip postures in practice. So um, in semester two, I kind of did a project and ended up mainly concentrating on that Oreda posture. So over the summer, I wanted to see could I knit together all those other ones that we've seen up there. Could I somehow knit those together in performance and kind of play to a good level? Because say in semester two I would kind of discovered that okay this is a possibility but it still kind of felt like I wasn't really playing music I was just kind of experimenting I suppose um, now, where's my stick at? so you'll see I passed out some sticks there but playing with all these different postures I found that like the sticks that I'd normally use there's a wooden stick in the tray there and it's really thick and really heavy and that used to be my favourite stick and I can't really play with it anymore because it's just too much but why that stick was good was because I play with these heavy skins and it takes away kind of some of the attack from the stick but I wanted to try lighter sticks so you'll see me kind of, I might mess around with some of these but basically I got 8mm dowel, it's called fluted dowel so it's got these little grooves in it so it makes it nice to grip and it's about the diameter of a pencil so I think there's something in that that Pencils are obviously kind of designed to be, um, I suppose, easy in the fingers and stuff like that. So I just found that that lip diameter um, worked well for me. Um, so I think we're, we're going to play some music there. But I, I might just show you quickly at the drum again the different postures I'm using. So when you see me like this, 
and that's just me playing with my regular um, Mercier grip. Um, when I'm going like this, that's what I call the Oreda grip posture. I kind of have to turn the drum a bit to make that <laughs> a bit more usable. Uh, then when I'm over here, I'm playing Seamus O'Donoghue. Um, that's John Joe Kelly there. Um, reverse Oreda like this. And then the odd time, if I'm feeling courageous, I can kind of get into Tommy, Tommy Hayes. So my big game and challenge here is to be switching through all of these and uh, I might drop a stick, but sure that's part of the fun. Can mm -hmm. um, we give something a blast? So I think we're going to start off with some jigs. <laughs> They were kind of they were getting longer all summer and then all of a sudden last week I decided to try some wine corks and it got shorter. Um, so we go on with some slides maybe. So the um, jigs they're kind of I suppose jigs you're using an alternating motor rhythm or you can use the kind of uh, double down motor rhythm. You can kind of use either of them just because the tempo. Um, but for slides I've been exploring just using this. Uh, kind of double down motor rhythm so I call it it's Humpty Dumpty I call it you know it's the lopsided kind of slide thing Humpty Dumpty Humpty Dumpty Humpty Dumpty um, so you'll hear a lot of that going on um, think what else going on with, uh, yeah so with slides as well, I'm very much thinking of dancing, so I really like using the John Joe Kelly one because 
uh, I suppose a lot of the strokes in the other styles, there's a lot of oblique strokes where you're kind of going across the skin. But this, you're coming straight into it, so you get real uh, loud impact. So it's kind of, I suppose, like the dancers when they really put emphasis at the end of a bar or something like that. So, we'll give that a go. <laughs> Been with any questions now at any point if you want. Um, but what did we have next on the, the tune thing? Was it Polkas? Polkas, yeah. Um, yeah, go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm 
Yeah, would it's, it's very much that do you know what I mean that um, yeah I just think it's really interesting that the, the variety of stuff that was out there and um, I suppose the contexts that they were playing in like there was especially the Stevie McNamara video even though I couldn't see him I could hear him playing and it's just this, you know this loud booming sound and I suppose um, the Boron has been very much shaped in the last few decades by professional players so you have to be on a stage with a microphone, not interfering with guitar players or other accompanists, and the bar on sound has become very focused, you know, for good reason. Like, you know, if you're getting up there every night and you have to reproduce the sound, you have to tame the drum, like you have to tape it. And, you know, you have to do all these things to make it much more consistent. But uh, I think it's great to look back at what people were doing when you didn't have these constraints and start from that point again and see, can you bring them into these contexts which is hard you know what I mean like I'd be playing now with a lot of like I don't use tape skins and I'm using kind of these sounds that a lot of people just find noisy but I'm kind of going at them and seeing can I kind of find a place for them so it's a challenge but you know it's kind of just I suppose a mindset as well yeah because John Kelly's style uh, is very um, obviously very popular very high energy but probably based a lot on drum kind of yeah. sounds as well and then um just you've touched on it there in terms of the the variety of tone. That's something we haven't really explored yet. I presume it's because you're you're concentrating on stick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just interested in that as well. It's funny because like concentrating on the stick meant that my mind isn't in the tone and I a lot of the time it, it is just a bit noisy, but kinda that now that I force myself to that position it's kinda like uh, I kind of I want that noise and I, in a way you know trad has become very tuned you know what I mean and even you have the door drawn you know that um, Don Lonnie has and that's all about getting a scale out of your bar on and that's really good and I can see how it makes sense you know if you're on a stage with PAs and stuff like that but I think there's a space for just kind of bringing noise back into the music a bit you know kind of I'd love to be getting symbols in there as well and stuff like that. <laughs> I have to put jingles on it yeah, next. It'd be interesting to see how that would affect what you're doing as well. Yeah. It sounds like it's, it's returning to that water kind of drum beat or heartbeat and the sound. Yeah. Um, as yeah. Well. And there must be something maybe in the, that sticking style that kind of lends itself to that perhaps. Because I, I think I'm a, 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 I'm a learner again, so it is a bit, um, you know, you're struggling a bit and it's not that polished. But I don't know, for me, the music should have that kind of roughness about it like I think it's a bit more inclusive for people if it isn't so perfect all the time so if there's a bit of leeway for people to be a bit noisy and be dropping sticks and all of that I kind of I, I like kind of doing that Very interesting I thought about a question about Do you want to ask anything? Um, yeah just, uh, no it's, it's just fascinating it's great to see the switch the stick and stuff that's a really cool thing that you should do it, 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 it creates a complexity. Yeah. Which you wouldn't, I, I mean, I'm there, I'm fascinated with the complexities of it, and it's making me thinking are certain stickings suiting certain styles, or certain stickings certain, suiting certain tune types more than others? You know, yeah. It's a, it's a it, I mean, it, it, when you're your project, you're in court, we'll do that. Yeah. So you, you, you have the exercise and have some problems there. But, 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 uh, um, the, the, the certain Sticking suit those tunes out rather than uh, the standard sort of Jigs and Yeah, it does. Um, well, like I was saying there about this, this kind of this humpty rhythm. Like I'm finding that that's really kind of come out because I can seem to do that in all the, the different postures. So it's a nice one to go to. And then so I'm hearing humpties. Then in it's anything that's danceable seems to have humpties in it. So you can have them in hornpipes. You can have them in slides, in polkas, it's all got this motion and it has to be something to do with the roots of it as dance music that this kind of basic motor motion, you know, seems but to crop the, up. The, 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 the different ways you have a generator in that motor room is creating slightly different grooves every time. Yeah. And that's the fascinating thing. That's when, that's when I hear your favourite tunes. I can see the switch and I can hear the groove. Yeah, like what, what's really fun is that Oreda one, and um, so say if I'm doing Humpties like that, and that's kind of got that tree beneath it the whole time, but when I'm doing that in Oreda, 
it lends itself to four, so you yeah. get this kind of little polyrhythm in the slide. So against the three, you'll be getting you're getting a four. Do you know? So those sorts of things start popping out, and you're like, okay, there's something interesting in here. And a very pithy question. Uh, you, I mean, you've gone out to a session and joined in and do all these things. And has any of the actual melody players noticed? P people don't really know it as much at all, but, but I, it was weird because I, 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 I kind of got out playing sessions a bit over the summer, but um, I don't know, as a baron player, it's funny, you're still kind of on tenterhook somehow in a session, and like, just people are expecting it to be like, you know, straight on the beat, and you're yeah. the timekeeper, so if, if I start doing fancy stuff and the thing falls over, it's just like, do you know. You come twice, you fancy stuff, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you going to continue to integrate these into your playing, these different sticking styles? And they, they, yeah, there's kind of no going back. It, it, they're hard, but right, kind of what got me going on this right, goes back years. Like, I've been travelling and came home in 2008, so I'd been away from a bar on for ages. I remember picking it up, and it just hit me. It was like, okay, I can do a roll this way, and everybody does that way. How come I don't, don't go the other way? So then I started going the other way. And that took years to actually get into my playing. I kind of spent a few weeks working up the technique to the point where it's like, okay, no, that's something usable. And then I thought it was kind of not really that interesting once I'd learned it, but it kind of became the staple of my playing over the years. So I think there's probably some of these techniques will fall by the wayside, but some of them then will, yeah. you know, they'll come in there and stay there. Because it's probably quite a the moment, but yeah. if, you, if you keep working at it, Totally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think other instruments have that, you know, that no instrument has one way of playing it. And then, yeah. like, so you get a box player like Daniel Mann, you know, and his thing is like playing all the different systems, you know. Mm -hmm. He's got all these different boxes, and um, it's all the time with guitar players. All these guitar players have all different sorts of plucking techniques and strumming techniques so I think there's definitely space for it um, I wish I'd started when I was younger it feels like kind of old dog and new tricks a bit you know <laughs> but no, what age you, you started yeah you had to work okay, sorry, I know that's great um, sure we try some polkas anyway seems we're from Cork only <laughs> <laughs>
area of time there. Um, yeah, if you've any more questions or. Should we try the reels or something? Yeah, we could do reels. Okay. <laughs> no, just be interested to see Yeah, yeah, there. no, if we, the, we, there's another set of reels. Should we get through into that? Or um, yeah. It is, but it's weird because I don't really plan it out, you know, so I have these different places I go. What's really nice about it actually is it gives you structure. So it's like, okay, I've these four or five different grip postures and it's like, I'm in this one now, which one will I go to next? Mm -hmm. And they all kind of seem to travel through the Mercier posture because that's my most, yeah. I'm secure and with that, you know. that transition moment to the moment where you might lose a stick. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. And it's like over the summer, it's like you, I found that often if I do, if I want to switch into the O'Donoghue one, I have to do two downs in Mercer, and then I can switch. Yeah. So you learn these little tricks to make it easy, you know, so there's, and then that gives shape as well, so. Just one last question, um, it seems that the emphasis in terms of complexity and Yeah. Quite an orthodox thing. Yeah. But for an orthodox robot, you just become accustomed to it. Yeah. Two, maybe four minutes, you know. But um, so that seems to be where the, the complexity has developed. Do you feel that another approach of complexity could be? Yeah. Not complexity, but variety. Um, you know, just a different approach to the to the input. It it kind of just give, puts you going in a different direction because I suppose. Our minds can only be concentrated on so many things so you know if i'm putting my concentration into the switching then my concentration isn't in other pl places you know what i mean so it's kind of a zero-sum game that way but it obviously does put you in different places to other players because i don't see anyone else switching that way you know it's fairly taxing like it's been <laughs> hard work all summer so i don't know it's not for everybody but yeah it, uh, not switching like that, like uh, the Baron Facebook on our the Facebook group of on the, um, yeah of Baron players um, is really good. But I see there be people trying out say Tommy's style or whatever, like people coming up with their own weird ways. But like you're saying, people tend to stick within one because it takes a while to master it and get secure. I suppose you know. Well, I suppose one can't stop it. One exception is when John Joe goes from the exactly to yeah to the totally yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, he, he, he'll do it kind of in the middle of something, so that's a good point, all right? Yeah. Right, we'll try, we'll try real, so. So anyway, uh, thanks a million to Sean Delaney for all his hard work over the summer and to Riley here this evening as well. And for Sandra Noel, thanks a million everyone.